Well, we felt like early on we needed to get some linemen, just starting with, you know, starting with the line. You know, we got seven seniors at O line. The quality of offensive linemen that we were able to sign was, to me, exceeded my expectations. And I, I don't say that just because I'm, I'm happy to be the head coach at Youngstown State. I'm going to tell you the way it is. Uh, we, we got some really good players there, and our job is to develop them. And football is important to them. They're tough guys. And, uh, you know, we got two line coaches here, Coach Carm and myself. So they know it's not always going to be fun. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm happy with that group. At quarterback, we signed two. And, uh, you know, I've always said I don't ever want to get caught without having enough quarterbacks. I don't want to be held hostage not having enough quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, at the receiver position, we got Watts. I feel like he's that slot receiver that we can bring in the backfield and do things with. We signed two really good tailbacks. You know, you got Jonesy from Ursuline. I mean, his product, you can't deny his productivity. You know, he's a productive guy. One guy doesn't tackle him. And then, you know, you, you, got, you got him at 205 pounds. And then you got Thompson. At, Thompson will probably walk in here at 225. You know, those are two guys that that'll that'll give you make make you make you pay for tackling them. So you know, I felt good about that defensively. I felt good about our corners. You know, Donald and, and Boatwright, and those guys will come in and, and compete. Uh, I feel good about you know Mays, the, the transfer from Syracuse, and I feel like at linebacker. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't really, I don't think we fell short anywhere. By no means, we didn't want to make any rash decisions though either. You know. We didn't have very many days to, to put this thing together, but we were able to get in there and, and, and rattle some cages and make some people work. Eric, you said three guys can play early. Do you expect them to step in come fall? I expect every one of these guys to come in. You know, if, you, if you're a guy that comes into our program, I want you to, to attempt to play. Uh, I want you to be competitive. I don't want you to come in here with the attitude, oh, I'm going to red shirt and I'll wait a year. Because what happens is, is you don't have the right attitude, and you end up setting yourself back two years. You know, we're always going to play the best player here, but if it's even between a, a young kid and an older kid, I'm going to play the younger kid because he'll be around here a lot longer, and that's your fault as an upperclassman. If you let some rookie come in here and, and be even with you, then you've dropped the ball. You took the job two months ago. You put a staff in tech, and you have a class like this. I mean, I know you touched on your, your assistant coaches, but just how proud of you of – be humble yourself, your staff, and everyone associated because... Well, you know, I mean, I, I think the thing that, that we got to make people realize around here, and I don't know how to say this other than just telling you the way it is, we've got to change the perception of Youngstown. And we've got to change the perception of this university. And we have the right people that are committed to it. Ron Strollo has done everything he can from an athletic standpoint and administrative standpoint with facilities. You guys, you guys walk around here. Have you guys been over in the players' lounge? Have you guys been over there? You guys need to see it. The things that he's done around here has given us a chance. We have nicer facilities than some of the Big Ten schools I've been in. We have a great product here. So when I, the reason why I say that is, is that's an easy sell. We have a great school. We have a quality education. Dr. Cindy Anderson and I had a conversation. We were talking, when I was on the phone in Cincinnati, we were talking about how we want to change the perception of Youngstown State University in the Dayton, Cincinnati, Columbus area. We need to make these people down there realize that you can get a quality education here in Youngstown. It's a great school. Every parent that comes here on this campus, it's great for us because they walk away, they walk away blown away. They're like, wow, this is really nice. There's really nice people here. And those are things that we have to battle a little bit but it's to our advantage because once we get them on campus, they walk away and they're like, wow, this place is great. And obviously, my, my hardest job that I've had so far since I've taken this job has been getting putting the staff together. And I've said it before, you know, we've, I've taken my time and I feel like we've hired the right guys. And, you know, when you have a great staff, parents are around other kids are around and they see them interact, it's, 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 it's easy. It's not as hard as everybody thinks. You know, everybody can just be themselves and they realize that we're real people.
when you started this process, could you envision this type of class when you first started this, that you would have this type of class? I, I, didn't, I didn't think we'd get this uh, quality of player. You know, I, I didn't... You know, I didn't know ex expectation-wise. I didn't know how good of a player we'd be able to sign because of how late it was in the game. But I've also been impressed at our, our staff's ability in this short notice. I mean, Mark Porter came in here in two days. Him and I sat down, and Dan Cobb watched 250 players. We wrote their names down, phone number, jersey number, and gave them a rating. Mark Porter doesn't come here and help us out like that, then you know we're probably behind. But then we took that feedback that we evaluated, gave them to our staff, and they went out and cultivated and, and established relationships early. And we were able to step in and take some guys away from some other schools that they were in the hunt with. Some guys we weren't able to change. You're not going to win all those battles. But we made an impression and we made people realize that you're not going to just come into Youngstown here in these local areas and have your pick of whoever you want, and we're just going to take, take, your, take your, your back up. I mean, we're going to go after, we're going to put a fence around this thing, and a couple of people will beat us here and there, but it's not going to be, uh, you're not going to walk in there and just get whoever you want, because we've we got, we got a quality place here. And in time, as word spreads, and high school coaches start to have stronger relationships with us and our university, we're going to become that much stronger. This is as weak as we'll ever be. Coach, could you foresee any more additions to this class? Oh, we'll definitely have additions, you know. Uh, I think there's always a potential ability of some transfers. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a possibility of some guys that may or may not have signed today. And uh, maybe they're indecisive about what they want to do. And uh, who knows, you know, they might sign tomorrow or the next day. But uh, those are... Uh, those are good possibilities, and we're always open to the to the right guy. I'm not going to just take any transfer. You know, I want to take a guy that's going to have the understanding that he needs to come in here and be a part of our team, and realize why he's here and what his expectations are, and how I want him to conduct himself. I'm not going to let somebody come in here and disrupt our football team. Coach, you talked about how important the quarterback position is. You got two tremendously different styles between the two. Can you envision a team where you're using? both of those guys, or is this going to be a, a system where you really gravitate towards one? I mean, you know, Miko Loxley can run the ball, Angle can run the ball. Now, you didn't see his clips run the ball. They can both run the football, they can both run zone read, they can both line up underneath center and run the power. So, I, I feel confident, you know, Coach Montgomery's not going to put these guys in situations where he's going to ask them to make unrealistic throws. We're going to make high percentage throws. We're going to manage the game. We're going to be able to run the football. You know, it's, it's all what you ask your quarterbacks to do. You watch Alabama. Nick Saban does as good a job as anybody of not asking his quarterback to do anything extravagant. And he plays pretty damn good defense, and he's good on third down, and he wins football games. And that's what I learned about playing in the SEC, is you better play good defense, you better be good on special teams, and it's okay on third and eight to run a screen and punt because you have to manage the football game. And uh, that's one of the things I learned about coaching in that conference. Uh, you can win a lot of football games, and Coach Trest was probably very similar, uh, and, and his, his, you know his football philosophy, and you know it comes down to winning games. I'm not one of these stat guys, but quarterback wise, you know we could put Watts back in there on the Wildcat. You know that's not talking about anybody on our on our football team. I mean, you know, down there against Clemson in South Carolina, we put Stephon Gilmore in there and ran the Wildcat and down the field. So there's all kind of ways. You I can put you a quarterback if you want. <laughs> you don't want that. Hey, you never know.